Hi folks, it's Shenuka here again with another Grease Pencil experiment. One thing that I find makes anime and manga so distinct from a lot of Western media is how much is put into establishing context and atmosphere. You get these shots and panels that really situate the story and create a mood. So I thought I'd try my hand at making my own anime style atmospheric shot. I started out by making these studies of two shots from Arieti to get a sense of colour, composition and painting styles. I gathered a bunch of reference photos for the kind of scene that I wanted, uh, rain dripping into a pond and a little frog just chilling to give the scene a little bit of life. I first made a bunch of sketches testing out different compositions and framing and I ended up settling on this composition and colour situation which I painted out in Krita. I wanted to have a gloomy but also snug, cosy kind of feel. I also noted down some elements that I could potentially animate to keep in mind as I got to it. But before we continue, a huge thanks to Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Sketchfab is a super cool site with a huge library of 3D models and assets accessible to everyone. And not just that, it allows you to upload, buy and sell all kinds of 3D assets easily. So don't forget to check out Sketchfab for all your 3D model needs with our link down in the description. And now back to the video. To give myself a little bit more of a challenge, I decided to paint everything in Grease Pencil. No bringing things in from Krita and Photoshop this time. If you want to learn more about using Blender as a painting program, I suggest you check out Sophie Jantak's channel. She does some amazing things with Grease Pencil. And I'm actually going to be using one of her watercolor brushes in this project. And you can find these on her Gumroad. I'm starting out by laying down some base shapes for all the objects in the scene. Each of them is a separate grease pencil object so that I can animate each one separately and layer them to overlap nicely as well as just to organize my project a little better. I'm drawing all of them in with a fill material that does not have a stroke, roughly tracing over my concept art. The frog is on its own little object and the water. I'm switching off my foreground object so that I can work on the layers of the scene that are further back. Now that I have the whole scene kind of mapped out in coloured shapes, I am going to start some painting. I am grabbing Sophie's brushes and I am starting out on the painting part. I'm using her watercolour brush that has some really nice variation to it to add some grain to the wood of the deck. I'm also adding a shadow in between the planks with solid fill to separate them out. Building up the layers of the grain some more. And I'm switching to the default grease pencil pencil brush to add a little bit more controlled lines and details as well. I was actually really happy with how this turned out. I wasn't expecting it to be this great. Not being super used to painting in grease pencil really. On a layer masking the base of the stones, I'm adding some texture to them as well and fleshing out the plants on the further bank. I also wanted the animated elements to have a different feel to the static painted elements, so I'm giving the frog a thin outline like what a lot of anime tends to use. And I'm adding some cell shading for the shadows and highlights without really painting it. And for the first animated element, I'm going to give the frog a blink. I've got onion skins on so that I can see my other frames. I'm drawing the eye under there and filling in the eyelid on a layer above the eye. And I've got a slowly opening eye. I'm duplicating the frames to create a series of blinks as well, with the frames slightly closer together to make it more rapid. On the lily pad object, I'm also adding some outlines. and some solid cell shading. I'm keyframing them to move very slightly from side to side and some of the lily pads are moving in opposite directions. Using the time offset modifier, I'm making them loop this motion. I use the time offset modifier a lot in this project to make all of my animations loop. Now for the duckweed. 
I've duplicated the first frame and now I'm sculpting it very slightly with the sculpt tool and a large brush. This is looking kind of jerky so I'm using interpolation to smoothen it out. And there we have a sense of the surface of the pond without even animating the water yet. Looking pretty good already. I'm adding some painting strokes to the water object to shade it a little bit including some shadows under the lily pads. And I'm lining the leaves in the foreground as well, giving them some cell shading too. This is the part I was super excited to try, adding the water droplets. I'm using a material that has a semi-transparent fill and a white line to draw them on. I'm adding a little bit of light reflecting off of them. I've added a noise modifier to make them quiver just slightly. Also keyframing the droplets to move from side to side with the lily pads. Now I'm adding some reflections on the water in a semi-transparent layer. Keyframing and sculpting them a little bit to move with the water as well. Adding a teensy bit of noise for a bit of a rippling effect. I'm adding some surf where the water strikes the bank. And I'm also animating the shadows on the water to move. Now I'm animating the ripple in the water frame by frame. Starting with a small splash followed by some rings rippling out from that point. Pretty neat! I'm adding a few more around the scene. And I'm animating some drops to fall directly onto the deck. Adding a dark spot with the multiply blend mode where the water strikes the wood. And I'm keyframing it to shrink as it's absorbed into the wood. And that's done. I've drawn a path for a droplet to slide down this leaf and into the water following the contours of the leaf. And it falls right into my ripple just as planned. I'm using the Sculpt tool to make the tip of the leaf droop a little bit to react to the weight of the drop as it slips down and a little bounce up as a reaction to it falling. I'm adding a wave distortion effect to the water to give it some wavy edges and finally adding another set of ripples around the objects in the water that have again animated with some sculpting. Added a few more water droplets here and there including a few drops bouncing back up off the deck, and it's pretty much done. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this project. I really enjoyed making it, and I'm looking forward to making more stuff in anime styles. Just let us know what you'd like us to try out. A huge thank you to all our patrons on Patreon. The names are up on the screen right now. If you haven't already, consider supporting us on Patreon. Also, you can join our Discord if you want to hang out with us and other creatives. And check out our social media if you want to see what we're up to. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!